A Profoto Grid is a quick, attractive way to link a series of thumbnail images to content. There are two styles of grids available. One option is the text below style, which is what you see here. It features an image with a title and excerpt text below. The other is the rollover grid style, which reveals the title and excerpt in an overlay when the image is hovered. Both of these styles have customization options in the Customizer Template group, Grids. To start, you'll want to set up the grid style options in the base template, and then you can override in a child template if you need your grid style to be a little different in just that template. Before you create a grid, the content to which you want to link needs to exist. For example, if you plan to insert a grid in a portfolio page, that links to some of your example galleries, first, you must create those galleries. Likewise, a recent post grid won't do you much good if you've not published any blog posts. As soon as galleries, pages, or posts are, are published, they will be available to display in a grid. Start adding a grid to a page using Insert Grid from the Profoto dropdown. Add grids to templates by choosing the P6 grid widget. Then, Work through the grid options and click to insert them. First, you're going to select the grid type. Some types are for linking to internal content like posts, WordPress archive pages, galleries, and static pages. Linking to external content requires the creation of custom grid items for use in a custom grid type. Even your Instagram feed images can be displayed in a Profoto grid. Then, choose the style, text below or rollover, and the layout you want. Depending on your choices here, you'll have different options, and I'm going to highlight a few of them. The grid style area has an option for hiding excerpt text, which is handy when you only want to use the title. You can even override the default excerpt length if you want to show more text. For grid layout, choose between cropped, in which all the images are cropped to the same aspect ratio that you set, or masonry, which uses the original aspect ratio of the images to display in equal width columns. Use the sizing options to control how the grid items grow, shrink, or rearrange at different browser widths. A grid will always flow in a responsive way according to these settings, filling the width of the containing row. See how the image size and the column number change as the width changes here? Now the gutter is the space between each grid item. Max columns is the maximum number of columns the grid will ever have, no matter how large the browser window gets. The min and max width apply to individual grid items, allowing you to control how large or small the grid items can get. And then for your ideal width, enter the width you would like the items to snap to as often as possible. This setting helps determine how many columns the grid is going to have. It's a good idea to play around with these settings at different browser window sizes so you know what happens to the grid under different scenarios. Let's insert a grid and take a look. I'll choose a recent post grid type showing the nine most recent posts, the text below style showing excerpts in the masonry layout. I'm wanting long excerpts so I'm going to set the override to 400 characters. For sizing, I'll choose a max of three columns, a minimum width of 50, and an ideal width of 300 pixels, and a max width of 600. Here's what that looks like. See how the images maintain their original aspect ratio in this masonry style? If posts have a long excerpt, all 400 characters are going to display. If not, only what's there shows up. As I change the browser width, the size and column number changes within my chosen size parameters. The background colors, borders, font styles, and the read more link, they come from the template's text below style options that I mentioned at the beginning. Now where do the grid images come from? In this grid, and for all grids of posts, pages, and galleries, the grid thumbnails will come from the featured image. If no image is featured, you're going to see the first image that is inserted. 
if neither is present, so no, there's no featured image and no images have been inserted, then you're going to see the fallback image for that grid style. Those fallback images are set in the customizer template group grids. For a categories grid, the category featured image is used and that's set in the Profoto settings area under grid and then category featured images. If there's not one of those, then the first or featured image from the most recent post in that category is what's used for the grid thumbnail. Now, what about custom grids? The images in a custom grid are the ones that are uploaded to each custom grid item. Let's look at those now. So in the settings area, grids, custom grid items, you can upload an image, enter a title, and some custom excerpt text. The URL that's entered here is what the grid image links to. Make sure you use an image that's large enough to accommodate the largest possible sizes for images in your grid. So if you set your max size to 600 pixels, then you would want at least a 600 pixel image to be uploaded here. When creating a custom grid, you're going to choose which of these uh, custom grid items that you want to use. Not only can you insert grids into pages and into templates, but you can choose to have any of your WordPress archive pages, like your blog post page for example, show excerpted posts in a grid form. And this option is in Profoto Customizer Content Excerpts. Usually you're going to set these settings in the base template. 